Welcome back to Bash Bros. The second episode of our TEW 2020 Notorious Pro Wrestling Play 3. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, Hans, you said that we were going to come back for We Rise, would you be on a Saturday? Uh, I, I lied. Uh, I didn't lie intentionally, so what happened was it was actually easier to get a TV deal than, I, well, it's not a TV deal, <laughs> I, I'll just, so, we got, we got a YouTube deal, I mean, you can upload the stuff for free, I, I would not call it a deal, but, so, the reason we were able to get this, I was looking for, right, where do I need to be to get a TV deal, went to YouTube, because it's usually, like, the easiest to get, all I had to do was upgrade a couple of our production values, and YouTube's like, yep, yeah, because yeah. you up upload it, get in here. So, we, have, we now have a YouTube deal, so we actually have a weekly TV show, which is where we are now. Um, so, every Thursday, Notorious Pro Wrestling Wanted. Um, and then at the minute as well, so YouTube is also going to just do all, all our stuff until we can kind of actually get a deal where we get decent money. The one thing I do like about the YouTube deal though is that it spreads our coverage to Europe, which at the minute isn't a big deal. So say we see we're here in the UK and in Europe, which yeah isn't a big deal at the minute, but later on, whenever we want to go to big I think it is, no large, we can start to establish ourselves a, at least a little bit in Europe. It really plays into us when we want to go try to go large. Um, you need 71 throughout Europe, pretty much, to get to large. Um, so if we can establish that really early on, that's a big plus for us. Other stuff then that kind of happened in the week or so, since you were last here, so we got some new, we did not I did a bit more business, got some new signings. The, when I was looking through the roster, I was like, man, I have a lot of heel. <laughs> like I just, like, there's a heel, he's a heel, hey, why not have another heel? Heel, heel, uh, heel, you get the point. Um, so I actually went out of my way and hired a bunch, about five new faces, can I join that so I'm not like, stuck with like all these heel versus heel foods with it then negatively affect the rating so kenny williams obviously is an nxt uk guy now again there's another risk having an nxt uk guy at any point wwe could just be like nope he's ours can't have him but he's very solid overall very solid like only one or two blips of yellow there one prayer so screw that you know really solid worker very young 28 you know a lot of these wrestlers kind of go to their 40s so you've got at least a, nearly two decades probably of kenny williams um sugar dunk who's someone i never heard of really good <laughs> like surprisingly good like that's a lot of grain that's a lot of grain in his basics um never heard of this guy before american but works in i, I is this the guy that Chris Jericho called Pineapple Pete once in AEW? Maybe? I don't know. Um, another guy then, Timmy Force. He's not 30. <laughs> this guy is like 12 years old and apparently he's 31. But sure, that's cool. But again, overall pretty solid. Good basics and stuff like that. Um, I also hired Joe Nelson, Kid Light Ghost 2. I called him Junior. A much better name. He's 18, like, and he's that solid 18. He can only get better. And then another one as well, which I think is actually a database overlook. So the original kid Lycos, as far as I'm aware, is still retired. Uh, he had a really dodgy shoulder. It's not even here, he's a dodgy, but he's a really dodgy shoulder, or like just could not keep it healthy, and he did retire. In this database, and I don't know if it's an oversight or maybe he has come out of retirement, but he is an active wrestler in this. 
So I'm gonna 100% take that and gonna abuse the absolute shit out of that over oversight. Because he's pretty solid, like, good kind of in-ring stuff, good experience, you know, solid basics, above average basics. Uh, and not only that, it gives me a nice wee team. They're not together, they don't t tie together in real life, but it gives me a nice wee team for Lycos and Son of Lycos to kind of just be together uh, and kind of bolster up the tag division, which is still tight at the minute, but what else can you do? I think like if we haven't had the chance to run our first shows yet, so and see how big a tag division we are going to have. Um, so let's do the first episode of Wanted. So we are going to be predominantly be doing stuff in Ireland uh, just for the sake of we actually have some popularity there. Just that that's what we started the game with. And we'll actually have people want to show up. So 45 fans. Love it. <laughs> Great. Oh, the Ringside Club. Can I just on just this on the other side of this? So I obviously have my old notorious pro wrestling safe. We were getting like ten thousand fans in Ireland, sometimes up to fifteen. We'd have like thirty for a pay per view. So to go back down to forty five is really depressing. <laughs> um But you know what? We'll we'll do what we have. we'll do it and be grand, we'll have fun. So Ringside Club, hundred venue, so yep. Yeah. Um there's no backstage incidences. Oh there is one. Nathan Cruz and the Cruz was brought before Wrestle's Court. Accused of making a mess backstage and not cleaning it up, annoying everyone, and he had to buy drinks. Okay, that's fine. Take that. That's not that bad. It's, you sort him out, Doug. Sort his ass out. So so this will be the format. I say normally we'll kind of go through the news and stuff of the world and kind of what's happened in our company and in other companies and then I'll book the show off camera and we'll come back in and run the show and then deal with any fallout and stuff from that, okay? So catch you on the other side. Right, we're back. The show's booked. One hour of hopefully phenomenal television coming your way. So we'll start the show. So, opening segment then, uh, Conor McGregor welcomes everyone to the uh, first ever taping of NPW Wanted and establishes the P12 tournament. So, the P12 tournament, for me, is a good way to get everything up and running. Um, pretty much, it's a similar format to the... Uh, G1 Climax, so it's two separate blocks of round robin tournaments, um, and the two winners of the blocks then go face off in a one on one match. The reason I think it's a good way for any company to kind of set up is because it gives one, it can spin off in the mini feuds afterwards or it, during the thing. It gives every match much more meaning because they're actually fighting for points. Like it's like, the, it's like any football league, you know, every single match counts because you're playing for something, it's not just an exhibition. And finally, on top of that, we are going to the P12, Proper 12, which if you're a Conor McGregor fan, you know that is the name of his whiskey, but it's perfect for a, um, yeah, like a round robin tournament. Uh, yeah, so the winner of this will then be the first champion, world champion of NPW. I will show you the brackets afterwards, um, uh, or not the brackets, the tables afterwards for who's on each block. And then, yeah. Conor McGregor introduces the t tournament, winner will get the title, and they can all slabber back and forth. So 71 rated, which is very strong, Conor McGregor is 100% going to have pulled that <laughs> through. Um, looking through, <laughs> this is the worst thing about starting a new company, is that <laughs> everyone <laughs> de debuts all their gimmicks. Um, so uh, just looking through here, so Easton Reese was adequate, Jody Fleish, Flesh. Leash, adequate, Curtis Axel, adequate, James Drake poor, hmm, that's disappointing, uh, Tom Campbell poor, poor, they're fine, that's on the desk, that's grand. Okay, for first match of the night, uh, so Kings of the North versus the Cyborg Wolves, 37, for me personally, I have to temper my expectation, because at the end of the day, to 
progress to where we need to be, we need to be scoring about 35 pop or 35 ratings to get our popularity to 35 for the next step up. So if our opening bite is only getting us 37, although it looks bad because it's yellow, it's not that bad. Um, and that's the thing, like if you're 37, if 37 is your opening bite, realistically you, you, your main event should be higher than that. And you, if the way I have the company set up, the main event then will set the tone for what the score or rating should be at the end. Okay, yeah, so Kings of the North then beat the Cyborg Wolves. I mean, Kings of the North have, did pretty well there, like 44, 42. So that's grand, so poor. Got that. That though, that was a, <laughs> lots of bad there. <laughs> so Bonesaw had poor for his King of the North gimmick, but Damien Corbin got great. Kid Lycos got, oh, okay, great. Yeah, Kid Lycos Jr. got awful. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> this is not a good start. Chris Sharp debuted as a staff member gimmick and got poor. It's a referee, it's fine. The match was too short for an important match in the audience's eyes. Or just too short for an important match in the eyes of our audience. What? It wasn't an important match, it was just a match. It went 931. Mmm. I wonder if how much that affected that. Like, because Kid Lagos' performance would have been the thing that dragged it down the most. But still scored 37. I couldn't imagine that's fallen that much because I like it would have worked out an average of that. <sighs> anyway, so to start their feud going forward, so Kings of the North beat down the Cyborg Wolves, even though they've won. So, as a testament to how good Austin Ace is, his current popularity is only like 10 in Britain. He pulled out a 40 rated match, which is really good. And again, the match is too short. 10 though. Hmm. This is interesting. I've never seen this one before. I'm wondering if I'm going to have to like... I know matches that are below 15 minutes get penalised. But I would have assumed it was like for something like the main event. Whereas this seems to be every match. Now our main event goes 20 minutes. So maybe we'll have to make like 15 minutes the the average match, but then you'd have to take away from the main event, so. Anyway, so yes, it's also versus Kenny Williams. Uh, it's another rivalry going forward. Um, 39, which is not bad. I think the shortness of the, or the length of the match obviously impacted it, because it probably should have been about a 41 overall. Um, yeah, he used to be his was gimmick, it was adequate. That's a bit disappointing. Kenny Williams, fan favorite, very good. Take that. So after the match, the Filthy Generation, so Stevie Boy, Lewis Garvin and Aspen Faith come down and attack both competitors. Uh, rate 25, that's okay. So Stevie Boy uh, got poor on his, oh my god. Our, our creative team needs sand. <laughs> so we could not seem to get a decent gimmick going. Um, Lewis Garvin, Filthy Generation gimmick. Great, and Aspen got very good. Uh, then a main event seemed much better, so 48, I'll take that. Doug Williams versus Davy Boy Smith. Oh, Davy Boy Smith got an adequate. Oh, I swear, this is painful. Why? And then referee got an awful, but these are referees, so it's grand. Um, overall, 48, that's decent. Doug pulled all the breaks out to try and get a better match out of uh, Davy Boy Smith. Definitely carried him. But 48 will take, say, 35 seems to be what we need to go for at the minute to try and get ourselves up to the next level. And that's the show. Yep, so popular increase by f in 14 regions, overall 50. Big part of that is going to be pulled up by our Conor McGregor Simon at the start. Connor is going to be a godsend. Connor, as in us, I suppose, is going to be a godsend in terms of his popularity being that good. He can kind of pull out big promos to help kind of give us a bump, but it needs to be backed up because although, like, all of the main event will carry a lot of that, whenever you do a tight angle, although you're rated by your best one, the other ones still are still taken into account. So we just need that one person who's just a great promo as well as Connor, and then we should be sweet. Um, but our gimmicks are trash. Our gimmicks are so trash. And finish the show. 
Okay, so news coming out then of our first tapings. Yeah, I made a vent. No, it wasn't actually taped, it was shown. Uh, NXT UK tapings were shown as well, but again, shown. And then, so no really news. And then, our viewing figures. Not point, not one. Yeah, 1,500 viewers, kind of. Great. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's round. Um, again, it's about temp tempering expectations. Like, that sounds bad, but we are just starting out and it's weird especially weird for me like playing until i had done this kind of my first run through just in my own time i was used to playing AEW, and i was used to playing wwe you know i'm seeing these massive figures so when i first went and did something that wasn't that and i saw like 48 so i was like what the fuck how did i get a 48 this isn't right god this is bullshit but it's about temper and expectation like as for, long as your popularity is going up after every show, you're doing the right things. You're doing as good as you can do. Um, so yeah, like that's our first taping. It's not bad. Has our size gone up? No. Like that seems pretty much the exact same as where it was. But we've got no momentum at the minute. We've only just started. You know, our momentum is one. <laughs> so that will rise over time. But yeah, so next time this should be going up every Thursday. Um, or again, it might never see the light of day. But it should be going up every Thursday. Our next episode will be our uh, i promise it'll actually be we rise this time hand on heart swear to god no pr promise you but yes look that is it thus far uh continue with the proper 12 tournament and have our first pay-per-view next time on bash bros